Hi, this is Dr. Steven Seiler. Today I want to talk to you about heart rate max prediction equations and generating them from testing data, using them in training. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, here is some real data that I have collected over several years. Actually, it's a combination of three different studies. Two training studies on well-trained cyclists plus a third study that was recently uh, completed in terms of data collection in a crowdsourced manner where I've asked people to give me information and then they have completed some rides, uh, four hour rides, two hour rides and so forth. But the bottom line is on all 157 of these cyclists that are aged 18 to 63, mostly men, but some females, uh, we have good data on their actual maximum heart rate and we know their age. So when we take the, those two variables and set them up on an XY plot, this is what we see. We see 157 dots and we see that they are not along a straight line or anything. They are spread about in a kind of a cloud formation. And if you look at it, we know that, you know, on this, this axis is heart rate, their maximum heart rate achieved during the test. On the X axis is their age. And so you can see approximately what the heart rate and age is for each person. And what you should notice pretty quickly is that for any given age, you can see a pretty big spread in actual maximum heart rate. Any, anywhere in this case, a 33 year old say with a 170, say seven max heart rate and up here, a 33 year old with a 209 max heart rate. Or you can see this person who's perhaps 23 with a 187 max heart rate. And this person who's about 53 with 187 max heart rate. So lots of variation, but there is an overall trend here. It does seem that this cloud of dots is, is kind of sloped downhill. And if we kind of draw a ring around the data in our first attempt to visualize what's happening, we see that that oval uh, has a certain fatness, which says something about variation, but it also has a, a slope. It, it's kind of sloping downward. So, okay, there's a trend there. But that's just a first visual picture. We can also be a bit more quantitative and mathematical in looking at this relationship and draw a regression line. Now I could get a ruler out and draw a line through the data and I could try to find what we might call the, the line of best fit. But it's better to let a, a program do it because it will mathematically go in and position that line so that the sum of all of the squared deviations from every dot to that line is minimized. So that's called the line of best fit through the data. And then the program will give us an equation for that line. So this is just basic algebra. Y equals the slope times X plus the Y intercept. But in this case, the Y intercept is, is a heart rate value, a maximum heart rate value, and the slope of the line is uh, connected to age. So 0.62 times age, about six tenths of a beat decline in maximum heart rate per year is what we see in the data on average. But with all the variation, age alone only explains about 27% of this variation. There's other stuff. There's genetics, there's training status. There are many different factors that can play in to heart rate for an individual. But we have a line and this type of approach has been done many times over the years. Uh, there's been a lot of different equations that have uh, been applied. Now, the equations that we tend to use are linear, but if we said, well, I don't think it is linear. I think maybe there's a, a slightly non-linear uh, shape here where perhaps maximum heart rate is leveling out. That decline is not linear. Well, I can force a different kind of equation onto the data. It will give me uh, an equation, but by looking at the change in the shared variance, what I see is, well, it doesn't help. It doesn't change. 
it's not better explained by a nonlinear or polynomial equation than it is by a linear. And this has been seen in many studies. So we typically see some form of a linear equation that is used to fit the data, whether it's 157 cyclists here or 5,000 uh, healthy people in a different study. So, so far, so good. We can use these kinds of equations to get an idea of the impact of age on maximum heart rate. There is an impact and it does tend to go down with age. And if I'm a, a coach or if I'm a test technician or a doctor, that's going to, when someone walks in the door to the lab or the office, then I'm going to kind of have an idea about them just by knowing their age. I'm going to have, I'm going to start to narrow my expectations for what I might see during testing and so forth. And there are a lot of these equations that you can find in the literature, many different or a number of different studies. And you see, if, if you look carefully at them, they all tie, kind of look pretty close to the same in terms of uh, a maximum heart rate or Y intercept value, and then some slope associated with age, a negative effect of age between about 0.55 times age and maybe 0.8 or even, well, actually the first equation, 220 minus age says one beat per year. Uh, most of the other equations that have been uh, generated since suggest that that age effect is smaller, maybe half or six tenths or eight tenths of a beat per year on average. That's what you're really seeing with those equations. You can go to this study that's there and, and find all of these references, okay? Now, I could throw my equation that I've just generated into this mix, uh, and you would see then that it's pretty similar. The slope about 0.6 beats per year, decline in maximum heart rate, starting from about the same point, 209, 205, 208, 206, and so forth. So, should I publish my Siler equation, 209 minus 0.6 times age. That's the new best way to estimate heart rate max if you don't want to actually measure it. The answer is no. You're not going to see me publish this. You're not going to see me try to bandy about this equation as the new best thing because I know that it is just as useful and just as useless as all of the other equations. Useful on the population level useless at the individual level or nearly useless because of that variation. It hasn't gone away. So rearranging an equation using a regression line, it doesn't change the individual variation in the underlying data and study after study shows that that variation is significant. It's substantial. So assuming anything else is going to be bad. Now, let's look, go back to this data, and let's just take a sliver of it. Here are 10 different people that all are 45 years old, just happens to be. And if you look carefully, you will see that their maximum heart rate ranges from about 208 at the very highest, all the way down to under 170, maybe 168. That is a 40 beat difference in maximum heart rate at the same age. Now you might call these outliers, but they happen. And these two people would be quite well served by this equation. They would end up being almost spot on. This one would be not so bad, but then these already would be quite a few beats away from the actual uh, reality. So you would see that for within 10 people, some would get a good fit and at the extremes, some would get a very bad fit from this equation. Okay. And when I've looked at our data from 157 cyclists, and I think that's representative, we see that the error uh, varies. And if we use 220 minus age as the calibration, a little bit less than half of our 157 cyclists would have been reasonably well uh, predicted. Their actual maximum heart rate was in five beats or within five beats of 220 minus age. About 30% were off by five to 10 beats. 
20% were off by up to 20 beats or 10 to 20 beats of air. Now we're talking big differences that would really impact uh, training zone calculations and so forth and would create confusion when trying to understand the relationship between, say, perceived exertion and percentage of maximum heart rate and so forth because the percentage of maximum heart rate that the person was using would just be wrong. They would uh, be confused by it. And maybe 5% of athletes would have such big differences that it would just be totally a mess to use one of these prediction equations. So that is the reality here, that uh, if you use these equations at the individual level for training monitoring, for evaluating fatigue and so forth, it can get really ugly if you don't really know your individual maximum heart rate. Relying on these equations is a bit of a uh, a lottery, a bit of a random guess as to what you're going to get and how well it's going to fit you as an individual. So that's the bottom line today. Um, hope that helps you. And if I have some, somehow given you the urge to watch a spaghetti western, uh, I am not going to take responsibility for that. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.